Welcome to The Real Money Show. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm Vice President of Guildhall Wealth. Joining me today is Jerry Karaya. The phone number, one eight seven seven eight silver The website, guildhallwealth.com. And last week, we had a title for the show, which was Price Smash or Opportunity. And turns out, Jerry, I think we were, we were correct in the, the assessment that it was, in fact, an opportunity, given the setup at the Commodities Exchange in New York. Last week, the price of gold, actually, I should say earlier this week, the price of gold bottomed at 1775 It's currently trading at 1835 here on Friday afternoon. So it's up about $60 or 3.5% and still up 21% on the year. Silver had a recent low earlier this week of 2260. We're now back up to 2418. That's a that's a seven percent increase, or up a dollar fifty eight, and we're up 35 percent so far this year. Jerry, if someone said I'm going to wait for the next bottom, what would you what what would you encourage them with? Well, this is a clear. If we look at the technical, since we're talking about tops and bottoms, this is clearly a technical conversation that we're having. So we have to understand, okay, what are the Fibonacci levels? And 1840, 1830 is a clear Fibonacci retracement level, so very good support. And it's also resting on the 200-day moving average, uh, which the trajectory is up. So if you want to wait, you can wait. Uh, but for us Canadians, we're looking at the Canadian dollar as well. Wow, the Canadian dollar has been up every single day, increasing us Canadian, our Canadian loony purchasing power. We can get more bang for the buck for our for our precious metals. What an illusion! I mean, the 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 budget was three hundred billion, right? Yeah. After already doing a billion, a hundred billion. So it's 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 phenomenal that 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 illusion exists. But speaking of, of technical, uh, you just mentioned some technical sides of the market. Uh, a, a very well-known technician in the silver market, Chris Vermillion, he, he does all the metals. He was recently in a video this past week talking about silver, basically breaking through $32 and going all the way to $39 within the next year. So I think that is, um, just from a technical standpoint, that, that seems amazing. If we look at some other price targets from major banks out there, Goldman Sachs is looking for $2,300 gold in 2021. That would be about a 25% increase from where we are today. Absolutely phenomenal if we can get to those rates. And, and let's be honest, typically Goldman Sachs is very conservative in their in their outlooks mm -hmm. hsbc same similar sentiment uh, they're looking at stimulus and accommodative rates which will continue to push the market higher so speaking of that let's talk about the fact that the price of gold went down initially a couple weeks ago or a week and a half ago on the vaccine news so the idea was oh the vaccine's coming out all our problems are solved who needs gold anymore so the price of gold went down do you buy into that narrative not at all uh, we understand these headlines to be simple very short-term knee-jerk reactions anything to give us some positive sentiment especially in this day and season that we're in with this pandemic job loss commercial property real estate property uh, uncertainties we are looking we're grasping for some sort of uh, uh, you know, positive outlook and take it with a grain of salt. The fundamentals as Bank of America and the, the bank cite their reasoning for higher gold prices is citing the mon monetary policy that has to be kept very loose and the money printing has to be printed. So the fundamentals remain. Those headlines on the, va on the vaccines, you take it with a grain of salt because uh, the reality is the money will be printed. Yeah, I think there's always room in the markets for some sloshing at the surface, but ultimately people don't own precious metals for a short term based on whatever the news of the day is. People should really have, and it's you know it's sort of well known that people should have 10, 15% of their net worth in precious metals as, as the bedrock of their portfolio as the insurance policy of the portfolio. And I think today it's very important to protect your wealth and have an insurance. So if you have insurance for your house, insurance for your car, um, life insurance, then you should also have insurance for your portfolio. So can, can real estate go up forever? Can the stock market go up forever? 
can printing go on forever? These things do have conclusions and usually when they end, it's not very pretty. And so it's important to have that insurance policy. So if you're looking at gold, is there room for short term and long term? Maybe, maybe this is a good opportunity, Jerry, to discuss what it means to build a position in gold and create that liquidity for yourself. So maybe you could trade potentially on some of that uh, that volatility. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. So let's let's talk about building a position. The idea of liquidity in the market. If someone did want to trade on the short term news, is that something that is actually possible with precious metals? Not at all. I mean, this is that part of your portfolio that should represent wealth insurance, your insurance policy. You don't trade insurance, at least we don't. Um, this is not a, a tradable. It is liquid. However, you don't want to hold, uh, liquidate initially, just you know, purchase initially to sell it uh, for a quick flip. This is not that type of asset class. Uh, we need to move away from that type of quick flip mentality. Precious metals is here for the medium to long term, and we have to have that perspective in mind. So, um, as much as we want to say that, yes, we want to trade and be traders, we can do that in currencies, you can do that in an ETF, but for physical precious metals, it's your wealth insurance. It's true, Jerry. I think precious metals are not trading vehicles in the sense of the actual physical product. This should be really the last thing that you would be looking to sell. But I think as the market's rising and potentially the percentage of your metals in the portfolio is also rising, there's room to there's room to edit the portfolio prune the portfolio back to the 15 percent level clients are acquiring more than 15 percent given the fact that there's no yield on cash in the bank that that leaves a search for risky yield elsewhere and without really having a lot of knowledge about those particular areas where can you go where you can get a decent yield that beats inflation comfortably which we have definitely seen in the metals, especially this year, but even average, right? Gold has averaged over 11% a year for the last 15, 20 years. Silver has done basically the same thing with some more ups and downs in the market. That said, it's important to establish a position somehow. And there are many different ways to establish that position so that eventually you can be at a place where you can lighten the load or take advantage of slight, slightly higher prices. Or like you saw with the big move in gold and silver this year, where silver moves up so high that you can say, yes, I can afford to sell off some of my position here because I'm still maintaining that 15, 20% weighting in the portfolio. And the best way to do that is to acquire on a regular basis or to look at the portfolio and say, do I have 10%? Do I have 15%? Am I comfortable with more than that, right? Some people are comfortable with more than that at this time, which is something that we're seeing. So there are a lot of different ways to do it and a lot of different products that you can do it with. S certainly with silver, 100 ounce bars are gonna have lower prices, lower premiums. Then you move into 10 ounce bars and silver maples, which are one ounce increments. Those are gonna have the higher premium. So you also have to balance going with products that may be more liquid in terms of smaller increments versus the larger bars which have the lower pricing and so that's something that you want to balance and that's something that we help our clients with here at Guildhall and we do it even in the registered accounts too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely so I, I do have that conversation quite quite uh, frequently especially today um, you mentioned just to trust your gut really go with that allocation that you feel is necessary I'm finding a lot of investors today are, you know, taking it home, buying direct, either going online at guildhallpreciousmetals.com or the RSPs, but they're buying a little bit more than 15, even more than 25%. In fact, why is that? I have that conversation with them. And it's simply, if they're not having the conversation with their professional discussing these negative realities, such as negative interest rates, well, if there's no response to that, then the ball is in their court. They have you have to take the wheel for yourself when it t especially today when it comes to your wealth. Where are you looking? Are you going to roll the dice for another year of a bull market when we know this stock market has been totally driven by speeches at the Fed, stimulus being printed, debt dollars being put into the the shares, corporate buybacks. This is not what we learned in university and college about about you know, finance and, and investments, what grows an economy. 
this is this is absurd. Yeah, it used to be you would put your cash in the bank and you would get an interest on it and compounded interest would turn you into a millionaire. Yes. Today you don't have that. Today you have to you've got to try to put it into something that will that will get a yield more than the inflation rate. The game has changed. This is no longer the the monopoly of the 80s or the game of life of the 80s and 90s. The monopoly has debit cards these days and our kids are learning a different form of of wealth and it's our duty it's our job here at Guildhall to educate through the radio show through our seminars or webinars stay tuned for the upcoming webinar uh, the zoom chat is coming up but education is part of our fabric here at Guildhall uh, transparency builds trust is our is our one of our mottos and we want to encourage you to have this conversation if you're not having the conversation with your financial planner of your accountant pertaining to bail-ins pertaining to uh, resets pertaining to negative interest rates or money printing Canada's debt you need to have these conversations and you need to get in touch with us today and also if you have an advisor that's not recommending gold you have to ask yourself why why is it that you are so anti gold in a market that's clearly done very very well double digit gains beating inflation how can that not be part of the portfolio since it's been part of the monetary system and it's been money for thousands of years if you want to hold some physical precious metals in your portfolio it's very easy you contact guildhall wealth at one eight seven seven eight silver or go to the website guildhallwealth.com learn how to hold physical precious metals in a registered account where you would have your own sub account at the vault fully allocated fully segregated you have direct ownership of that product no counterparty risk there's lots of other ways to get involved in the market and we'll talk about that and much much more here on the Real Money Show on Global News Radio, 640 Toronto. Uh, just wanted to return to our last week's topic, which was price smash or opportunity. And we did see the price of gold hit a low of 1775 earlier this week. We're now back up to 1835, which is a $60 gain, 3.5%. Gold up 21% this year. Silver had a low of 2260. It's already back up above 24 dollars which is a over a dollar fifty gain or seven percent and it's up thirty five percent on the year overall Jerry a fantastic year for precious metals holders congratulations to everyone who's been getting involved and one of the best ways that we find to get involved in this market is the registered accounts Jerry can you talk a little bit about that so Guildhall offers the ability for investors to hold physical gold and silvers, silver in registered plans, whether it be a red, an RSP, TFSA, Lira, RIF, LIF, you name it, the entire umbrella, physical gold and silver will be held within. What this offers is your protection of your, your nest egg. Assets will be held entirely outside of the banking system, so in a vault here in Toronto. Uh, highly liquid accounts and our investors are enjoying really good returns thus far much higher to continue but it necessarily works in this way you either put new money into an account we help you along the way from the very beginning to open the account or to initiate a rollover or a transfer from an existing institution we, we help that with with that as well as well as the rebate if there's a transfer fee to to come over to we work with Questrade if there is a transfer fee, we help get that rebate back to you. Um, transfers typically take about one, uh, one to three weeks to complete. Once that's done, we can acquire the physical gold or silver. We'll talk about the allocations. Should we go 50% silver, 50% gold? What are the gold to silver ratios looking like today? What's a good buy? What do we recommend? And remember, investors do get some free gold for every 10000 U.S. purchased in these plans, Guildhall gives away a free gram of gold back to you. So we love that. And speaking of ratios, the ratio of silver to gold is 76 to 1 right now. You need 76 ounces of gold to buy, uh, sorry, 76 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold, uh, which is very, very high historically. It's been 16 to 1. So this gives you a sense that when the market is undervalued, we consider gold undervalued against the debts, against all the money printing, that uh, when gold's undervalued, silver's even more undervalued. So you tend to see people wanting to get into silver because they're looking to take advantage of the market versus people who are buying gold, which is really strictly for that kind of wealth protection. And hey, if it beats inflation, so much the better. We talked actually last segment about liquidity and speaking of the registered accounts, one thing I've noticed with registered accounts is a lot of people are taking advantage of the TFSA. 
for those who already have an established position in precious metals, but don't want to leave the cash in the bank. So what they're looking at is they're seeing the TFSA as a route to hold a, to quickly acquire physical silver or gold. And so long as over the next year, they can get a gain of over five, six, seven, you know, anything over that plus, they can say, yeah, it was way better than having it in the bank. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think given the, the fundamentals that we're going to talk further about today, that it seems a, a very low risk option. And again, if you're looking at the current prices in the market, you're just coming off the bottom. You're clearly just coming off a bottom in the market. Premiums are still extremely high in the market. Uh, physical demand is still incredibly strong. In fact, uh, central bank demand is, is getting strong again. That's something that uh, we can talk a little bit uh, further about. The number, 18778 Silver. The website, guildhallwealth.com. Now, uh, the World Gold Council, they're uh, an important um, outlet in the market for information. And, uh, Jerry, you've got a report from them that just came out. Yeah, one of, re one of two reports, Jeremy. The, the one that came out last week uh, is called The Relevance of Gold as, as a Strategic Asset. And they begin by talking about the point of gold and the strategic role is very clear they say it's to complement your portfolio it acts as a store of wealth and a hedge against systemic risks are we seeing risks today absolutely currency depreciation yes of course it leads to inflation gold has historically improved portfolios risk adjusted returns delivered positive returns and provided liquidity to meet liabilities in times of market stress are we anticipating market stress? We are in market stress today, which is why central bank demand, which is one of their points, a surge of interest in gold among central banks, minus Canada, across the world, used as foreign reserves for liquidity, safety, and diversification. We here at Guildhall believe that we should all become our own little private central banks, and this is clear. And this is why we're seeing Countries from around the world, especially in Europe, Uzbekistan, Bank of Italy, talking about educating their citizens now about the importance of holding gold. Yeah, and, and you know, as you were just mentioning some of those things, Jerry, this idea of liquidity coming up, I think that does have to be, you do have to understand liquidity versus, let's call it tradeability, right? In the first segment, we were discussing the idea that gold and silver are not necessarily trading vehicles, in the sense of trying to take advantage of this of this pop in the market and the volatility in the market because there's a cost to acquire it there's a cost to hold it there's a cost to sell it but it is a very liquid asset meaning if you do need the money right if uh, that's why the bank of Set international settlements calls it a tier 1 asset because it is as good as cash and it's as liquid as cash you can have we have people who if they need money they sell today they've got the cash tomorrow uh, some people come in and they can sell and walk away with a check. So it's an incredibly liquid market. It's just not a, a market that you would potentially, that you would look at as something that is a trading vehicle per se. And Guildhall acts as that gateway to this massive world of precious metals. Precious metals is the largest, if not the biggest market besides cash, foreign exchange, and the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. one to three year treasuries. This market is massive. They, the report goes on to discuss the uh, depth of the, the gold market, 3.1 trillion in additional uh, 620 billion in open, open interest. This market is the deepest. So Guildhall being your gateway to this is your, is your method of you know, buying and selling quickly over a phone call. And this is the entire point, whether you be a new investor or a larger high net worth investor, this should be the top three of one of your concerns is liquidity. And another is this is the notion that you need to be diversified. Uh, portfolios need diversification and this is not brought home. This is not really clear to investors. How do I obtain this diversification? And, and if you talk about the diversification as well and liquidity, going back to the topic we, we were discussing in the first segment of building a position, some people like to build a position where they take a certain amount home. Let's call that deep storage gold or deep storage silver that That's they right. really have no intention of ever selling. But then when you start to think about product that you want to have liquid, that's where a vault comes into, into play. 
Uh, we have a client, for instance, that's going away for a year. Well, they don't want to store the product at home where they don't have eyes on it. They don't want to put it in the bank where they don't have eyes on it. But at the at the vault, if they're away and they need they need cash quickly, all they have would have to do is contact us, and we can sell the product and wire the funds. So there is there is a, a strategy there in terms of liquidity again, where you could have deep storage, physical gold and silver. You're not looking to sell that at any point, or there's products that you want to have liquid. So another example would be if we're looking at eventually editing a portfolio back from let's say the price of of you have 25 percent and the price of gold and silver doubles all of a sudden it's worth 50 percent of your portfolio well you want to be able to quickly sell that now what do you sell you might want to say well i'll sell my silver first because that's gone up the it's gone up more it's had a bigger mm -hmm. gain it's uh more volatile it's not really what i want to have as the core port of part of my portfolio and it's already in the vault so i can just pick up the phone and, and sell and as well you don't really see central banks buying buying silver is it but do you know why that is by any chance? I I have my own my, you know, my own thoughts and theories. Gold has that intrinsic value, and it's more concentrated than that of silver. Uh, but we do know that other entities and institutions are acquiring, uh, as central banks do gold. These institutions, such as J.P. Morgan, are acquiring a amassing a huge amount of silver for a strategic purpose like gold. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. If you want to own some silver, just like J.P. Morgan, you can contact us, and we'll be happy to assist you with that. Jerry, any other outstanding points from this report that you thought uh, would be important to share with the audience? Yeah, what did stick out, and what stood out for me was the beginning was the increased relevance of gold. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, gold was this alter alternative investment. Today, gold is, according to the report, is increasingly recognized as a mainstream investment, evidenced by the fact that global investment demand has grown by an average of 14% per year since 2001, and gold price has increased almost fourfold in major, major currencies over the same period. So if gold is not a major discussion in your portfolio adjustments of your portfolio with your financial planner or accountant, this needs to be part of that conversation today. Yeah, and also I, one of the other trends I've seen over the last definitely five years is a trend towards actual physical product that people demand that direct ownership, that there's no counterparty risk involved. Whereas if you're looking at an ETF or a certificate or a gold back fund, these sorts of things, you, what you ended up with is exposure to the gold market, but not necessarily gold ownership. And there is a difference. We would tend to see those as investments, quote unquote, I'm using air quotes <laughs> um, for those of you who can see through the through your cars. Um, but rather than with gold, it's more about asset ownership. So I think that there's something uh, to be said there in that sense. Now, central banks, quickly before we go to break, uh, another Another um, gold report here is from the World Gold Council is about uh, central banks resuming gold buying in October. And uh, it's very quick. Uh, uh, Christian Gopal is uh, in this article was just quickly discussing the fact that following two consecutive months of net sales, central banks have resumed buying in October. Global of Global official gold reserves rose 22.8 tons on a net basis. Levels of buying remained consistent within the previous two months, but selling activity was, was far reduced. As we noted in Q3 Gold Demand Trends Report, uh, Q3 2020 was the first quarter of net sales since Q4 of 2010. So, so basically in March, it was the first time that central banks were selling gold, largely due to hefty sales from Uzbekistan and Turkey. This prompted a new focus, renewed focus on central bank gold demand and whether it signaled a mindset towards gold ac accumulation. Basically what's happened is after March when Uzbekistan and Turkey sold, all of a sudden they started actually buying back. And Uzbekistan bought eight tons. Turkey bought back seven tons. Um, United Arab, uh, Arab Emirates bought six tons. Qatar bought two tons. And India bought two tons. So we're back to net positive uh, accumulation on central bank side. In the next segment, we're going to talk about some central banks that are looking to introduce a parallel currency. 
And what could that currency possibly be, Jerry? You're going to have to wait to find out on the other side of the commercial. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. You're listening to The Real Money Show on Global News Radio, 640 Toronto. Now, let's talk about the central bank before we can get on to our next topic, which is platinum, something we don't often talk about here on the show, but it deserves a spotlight this week. Uh, this was an article put out by uh, J- Jan Neuenhaus, and he's talking about the fact that in November 2020, the central bank of Uzbekistan issued sealed gold bars with a QR code for real-time verification. Now, that's not new, the QR code. Pamp Swiss does that with all of their product, and that's something that we sell. Right. Uh, with these new bars, the central bank of Uzbekistan, or CBU, aims to stimulate gold to be used as a store of value as well as to promote circulation of gold. Wow, this is a novel idea, although it goes back thousands of years. <laughs> More and more governments and central banks around the world are promoting gold as a store of value. Not surprisingly, as gold has proven to preserve its purchasing power over thousands of years. Um, Thanks for stealing that from me, Jan. Um, And it's becoming ever more clear that the future of fiat currencies is shaky. What do you think of that, Jerry? All of a sudden, central banks are saying... I think you should own some gold. Well, kudos to the central bank. They're actually telling their citizens, telling their people, hey guys, let's wake up to the reality here. This is... This is how you protect your wealth. Wake up. Fiat currency, they do die off after a while. This is the asset class to turn to. This is gold. And holding it in your possession is very key. And, and you know, the, the gimmick of having the QR code, that's great. I love it. I love the idea. It's not necessary. But having a QR code to, you know, prove the, you know, verify the authenticity of the gold is a great idea. Um, you know, definitely attract some some new buyers for for Uzbekistan and for the gold. But again, kudos to the to the central bank and the government for doing that for the people. Yeah, there's lots of different ways. You called it a gimmick of trying to to give the impression of you know you know what you have. One of the questions we often get is, well, do I get a certificate with this? And we're always saying, well, you're getting real gold. Um, but they kind of do have something like that. You know, our Royal Canadian Mint in their one ounce gold bars in the package, which you would never open, is the certificate. certificate. Um, the gold maples and silver maples have the bullion DNA in it. So there's um, a piece of hardware that you put the coin in and it, it links to Royal Canadian Mint. And it basically you can print off something that says it was it was produced there. Uh, the QR code, that's something that Pamp Swiss produces where you download an app and then you just quickly do the QR code and it shows that it was produced at, uh, at Pamp Swiss. But ultimately, there's a quick, there's other ways to, to authenticate your metal. And one thing I actually do, do Jeremy, um, especially for some of the clients out west in you know, BC or whatnot, and they call us for the first time and they're, they're going to send them some funds to buy the gold. And, and I understand that hey you're sending the money and you're going to wait for the gold to arrive what what i do and you can ask me if you want to do this what i do is i get the gold bars out um, and i take pictures of myself uh, doing the test in front of them with the sigma metalytics machine proving that each and every one of the gold bars with the serial numbers are real i'll take some photos of that and i'll email that to the person out west so they have a file in their email inbox showing that the bars i will receive are testing positive as gold and with the serial numbers to match and the you know and the, they love it and they love that idea that's a that's a great service that's something that uh, you know you don't get everywhere um, very important question your your hands are manicured when you do this correct <laughs> yes and I'm, majority of times I'm wearing gloves as well oh I learned my lesson yes the cotton gloves we once got in trouble here at yeah. Hall. we posted a, a YouTube video for an unpackaging and one of the first comments that came up was oh I can't believe you guys aren't wearing gloves. So we kind of learned our lesson and said, yes, when we're handling the product, it's a nice touch to to wear your cotton gloves. But it's not necessary. Silver will tarnish. Just like your silverware, it tarnishes. It's a a good sign that you have real product, definitely. But uh, very easy to clean. There's, you know, they have all those different products at the store to help clean silver. But there's one product that I like. I find I can only really find it at Canadian Tire. And it's like the Clorox wipes, yeah. but it's it's for silver. So you just pull the one one wipe out. Make sure you're wearing your dish gloves. Polish up whatever you whatever you want, and uh, silver wise, not everything. Don't don't do your watch with that. Um, but then you just 
run it underwater and it's brand new. We've taken in some bars that were kind of old, kind of tarnished, cleaned them up with the with these uh, kind of cloths that they, they have. Uh, we do have a, a blog post on our on our website about that, just dealing with tarnished silver. But uh, Jerry, we're, we're running out of time quick. So let's talk about, let's put a spotlight onto platinum. Before we do, if you want to learn about acquiring physical precious metals, call call us at Guildhall, one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. Jerry, Platinum. Well, this is the play that we love. Um, this investment setup for Platinum is one that is deserving of much more attention. So the second report that we're bringing to the table, and please get in contact with us if you need this report, is the latest quarterly report, report from the World Platinum Investment Council, which outlines this bullish setup. Uh, we know that Platinum and Palladium are important components in the manufacture of catalytic, catalytic converters for vehicles, diesel vehicles, petrol vehicles. Palladium used to be a fraction of the price of platinum if you look at the charts and so and so manufacturers figured out how to substitute palladium for platinum. Today says the report that it seems that manufacturers are gearing back up now toward using platinum again to reduce their costs but more importantly uh, and not widely discussing it as they may want to load up prior to the investment market realizes so they're you know they're getting ahead of the curve. It is also now becoming more widely accepted that that diesel, for which platinum is more effective, is being increasingly recognized as the more green of the two fossil fuels. So the report is long and detailed, so get in touch for that. But here are some of the key highlights for platinum. COVID-19 hurt the supply more than the, than the demand. Forecast a deficit of platinum of 220,000 ounces deficit forecast for 2021. And despite lower automotive uh, demand, this has been offset by strong investment demand. I know we here at Guildhall, we like, we like putting some money towards in, uh, platinum as well. Investment volume is expected to be up to 32% to a record high of 1,600,000 ,000 ounces. And the absolute concentration of production in the unstable South African environments discussed in the linked articles in the, linked articles in the report highlight all of these factors for a tremendous bullish case for platinum you know get on board with platinum as well if you'd like to get that report you can call us one eight seven seven eight silver and you know the website guildhallwealth.com and we can show you that report and it might be something to diversify your precious metal portfolio a little further with so the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com let's talk about getting some free gold Free gold, Guildhall Precious Metals, gives away free, a free gram of gold for every 10,000 U.S. invested in RSPs, TFSAs, up to 10 grams. A gram of gold today is about $80, $90 Canadian. So this is coming back to you. This is going to be sent home in the mail, or you can come pick up your gold. But uh, again, Guildhall, this is one of the things we want to do. We love giving away free things giving away the knowledge and information that you need to be equipped to make the decisions to get into gold and silver. But we want to encourage you uh, to get in the market and get your free gold. And I do like those 5-gram golds. We do 5-gram and 10-gram. They also have a 25-gram pack. That's usually where we're kind of breaking off for the, for the grams of gold. But 5 grams is a great gift. It comes in sort of a credit card size package with the gold in the center, so it's not as easy to, to lose. And uh, and kind of easier to store, you know, in your junk drawer or whatever it is, but uh, a great gift. And we do see year after year more people are interested in using precious metals as a gift because the price is rising. It's an it's a it's a it's a lesson in in money along with a gift. And all it takes is a couple of years later, the, whoever's received the gift looks at what it's worth and they say, ah, we've got something on our hands. Something else that's also rising in value, Jerry, are natural fancy colored diamonds. As you know, the Argyle mine, which produced 90% of the world's pink diamonds has closed officially. I believe it was about a month ago. And what that means is 90% of the world's pink diamonds are no longer coming to market. Only only 10% left from wherever around the world. So it was it was the most concentrated source for pink diamonds, but it was only one tenth of one percent of the entire production. So you could fit an entire year production into a teacup, and the amount of diamonds that would be the highest, rarest, investment grade quality would fit into a teaspoon. 
which is absolutely crazy. And, and they would put together the tender. They'd put about 40... Five to 55 diamonds into a tender. They might just be the largest diamonds, the ones with the strongest colors. Whenever Guildhall was going after one of these diamonds, it was usually there was about four or five out of the whole lot that were A, sort of in the price range that our clients are looking for, in the clarity that we are looking for, and obviously the color. One being a, we had a deep, fancy, um, over half a carat that we got from the tender, which is a beautiful diamond. It reminds me, every time I see it, it reminds me of a, a, a glass of, of burgundy wine. It's just mm -hmm. that kind of rich, deep color. But these diamonds have continued to rise. In fact, over the last 20 years, they've gone up over 500% as a whole. So some have done better. Some might not have done quite as well, but you can definitely see what those gains are. And it's just a matter of time between what it's going to look like for the next 20 years. Um, I know we're just projecting here, but what are your thoughts on that market where there's zero supply anymore? The supply and demand factor is key. You, 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 when you don't have the supply anymore, it's just a matter of uh, investing 101. Mm -hmm. uh, supply and demand is a factor, and, and, and one factor for, for me is the, is the you know, uncorrelated asset class. This is an uncorrelated asset class to your traditional stock bonds and cash approach. And it has a, just like uh, how gold and silver are positive uh, to inflation, gold and, uh, gold and silver do move up in that type of environment. So does your natural fancy color diamond. Concentrated wealth, you can literally hold in the palm of your hand a house. And this is remarkable considering today all of the risks that we're seeing with the potential you know having to move around the country or move countries how do we do this seamlessly well with a diamond this is uh, historically one of those ways that investors citizens have protected their wealth it is an incredible market and one of the things that I've noticed over the years about the market is there's no there's no margin in it there's no financing so people who are acquiring these diamonds big or small and that's the size or budget, they tend to buy them flat out. There's, so it means that there's no volatility in that market. Volatility tends to come from things that are leveraged. And because there's no leverage in this market and it, it, the products are all owned outright, it means that there's basically been zero volatility in the market. Um, now, COVID has disrupted the market for sure. Uh, people can't get to the office. They can't get to the bank, you know, um, in New York. They can't, you know, ship people just aren't aren't looking at them as much because they just can't get out of their homes and such but uh, but that said I think that next year is going to be a very interesting year because it's going to be the first year where the Argyle mine is no longer open and we start to see how the dealers are going to be handling the fact that there's no product coming in and what do you do when you're trying to find good product all of a sudden so I think that'll be an interesting story to track and I, I do believe as well that with the natural fancy color diamonds um, you know the the rising tide lifts all ships and I think that this Argyle mine closure is going to be big big uh, developments for this market going forward the gold and silver market however have continued to to march further along so far this year gold is up 21 percent silver's up 35 percent and they have tried their best to get it as low as possible um, and yet we are still double digits to the upside and it's been a fantastic market so anyone who's owned it over the course of this year has basically beat inflation by about four four to five years which is incredible if you think about it and that's what you're looking for for an asset to hold in a portfolio jerry quickly before we leave today can you uh, just let our listeners know how they can get the different ways they can get involved in the market get in touch with us at one eight seven seven eight silver email us drop us a line um, we have two presentations coming up for those investors who like the idea of holding physical gold and silver in an RSP. Get in touch with us and jump on to one of our Zoom meetings. A presentation is in preparation, as well as if a diamond is something that you want to get involved in, find out how a colored diamond can, can, can benefit your portfolio, how to get a, a colored diamond in your possession, in your portfolio, which diamond will work best. We encourage you to jump on one of our Zoom presentations for the diamond discovery session. We understand that this may be a new, a new investment or a new idea for you, so get in touch for that. And we have the guides, everything that you need, the reports that were listed today. But get in touch with us uh, either through the website, www.guildhallwealth.com, guildhallpreciousmetals.com, or give us a call on the, on the old uh, 
telephone one eight seven seven eight silver. And of course, you can buy it direct, hold it in an RSP, store it in the vault. We even have access to um, power margin accounts through Quest Trade, where you can use product held in your TFSA as a as a down payment, as collateral to hold additional product in your margin accounts. So that's something you could look at if you're trying to take advantage of the market. Jerry, it's been a fantastic week. We're looking forward to next week in the market. And we're look forward look forward to speaking to you next week on the Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. You've been listening to the Real Money Show on Global News Radio six forty Toronto.